Thank you, IT. Welcome, everyone, here to the water land uh, hearing of the Committee on Water and Land. Uh, today is February 7th, and it's 1 p.m. in room 229. Uh, <clears throat> we're um, on, we have some testifiers today on Zoom, and we also wanted to share that with all of the testifiers, including those on Zoom land, we ask that you stand on your written testimony. If your all testimony is different from your written testimony, time limit for each testifier will be one minute. And also, um, I as chair would always allow people if they wish to speak to please feel free to come and speak as well uh, with, within the limited time. Uh, and the content including in this hearing notice, uh, copies of the bills and the testimony can be found on our legislature's website. The live video stream and archive of this hearing can be found on the Senate's YouTube channel. Uh, Decision-making will uh, occur after we hear from all of the testifiers and complete uh, the agenda. Okay, we'll proceed with uh, SB 3157, and this is relating to direct negotiation for public land leases, and this authorizes disposition of public land leases for agricultural, commercial, industrial, hotel, and resort purposes through direct negotiation. Okay, DLNR, we have many of you well represented to do at our hearing. Welcome. Yes, Chair Chang. Aloha, Chair Aloha. Inouye, and Vice Chair Elefante, Don Chang, Chair of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. Thank you for the opportunity to um, present our testimony. Per your instructions, I'm going to stand on our written testimony, but should you have any questions, as you can see, we have our staff behind us, so I'll stand on my written testimony. Okay, and members, uh, for this committee, I allow our members to ask questions uh, as the testifiers come up and speak, because I think it it adds more to the discussions of that particular um, item. I do have a question, yes, though. Um, this is an administration's um, bill as well. Yes. So, um, what's the um, what does the LNR? Why do you need this bill? So, um, uh, thank you, Senator uh, Ian Hirokawa with the LNR. Um, we're requesting this bill um, to, well, really there are multiple reasons, but the primary one is simply that um, a lot of our leases for disposition do have to go through public auction. And what we found is that, you know, over the course of time, the public auction process isn't as effective anymore to, you know, issue leases because there simply isn't competition there. And if you just have maybe one interested lessee, the, the, the time and the burdens it takes to go through it they're discouraged and they just simply go and find another property. So in the end, we don't have a lease at all, you know, so we feel that the, the, the direct, along to direct negotiate, which is already in statute and we're seeking to expand the scope of its ap ap applicability to other types of leases can allow for a more, um, you know, for a, for a better chance at negotiating, possibly getting a more or less these more effective use of lands. And uh, another thing too, is that it's really, in some sense more transparent because if you have a interested party and you can negotiate with them when you go to the board you know who the, you know the potential lessee is um you know what the lease you know would look like um you know the use that you know it's better for uh looking reviewing it for like 343 because you know the specific project that is proposed and and that's what um, will be taken to the land board in a public meeting and the public will have a chance to review that rather than just approval of a public auction and you don't necessarily know who the winning the winning bidder will be so there's a like i said multitude of reasons why what other agencies also have um uh is applying this um process um with direct negotiations oh, i think doa maybe I, I know doa has um I think a lot of other agencies do have, I mean, we're actually, I think, a minority in that we don't have a lot of, a lot of agencies do Well, have truthfully, yeah. I like this bill. Good. Yeah. Thank you. And I think, you know, all the years that I've been here, um, I think one of my pet peeves has always been to DLNR and land leases. 
and I think I'm happy that this administration is thinking uh, of how you can have direct negotiations as well as how to be more transparent. No, I and I think that. you've heard from me from day one when you guys all came into office. And we have heard you and I, I would want to add to what Ian has said. This gives us parity, for example, with DOA. So for example, the Act 90 leases, many of the tenants, we and could not negotiate a lease with them. And we them. thank you guys yeah. for that as well. Yeah, so we're trying very hard, but I think that gives us an additional tool to be more effective in managing our lands to ensure that those those tenants that are actually that have demonstrated the ability to care for these lands and steward their land that we now have the ability to negotiate with them so so this is so i think we've heard you senator this administration has heard you and we request yeah, your support for this bill thank you yeah. very much i've been here almost 18 years <laughs> and i think from day one when i stepped into the senate um it's been an ongoing and again like i say we went through what three governors and at least you recognize that there's a need on top of that you know under your jurisdiction dlnr has lots of land yes. and so how can you move things faster uh and you know rather than leaving lands um you know uh just sitting out there i mean we got big issues as right. you know right. Right. in more on the Big Island right. and in Hilo area, right. um, you know, businesses have to survive. Right. Right. And that's more important as well. Thank you. Okay, but we certainly appreciate the time that yeah. you folks decided you're going to create a measure um, yeah. this year because you had a year and you understand you. the pleas that you've heard from us as well. Thank you. Yes. Any further questions? Senator Elefante. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Dylan R, for your testimony on this, I do have several questions. Um, and I believe you did highlight this in your testimony, but I just wanted to just get clarification. So with this proposal, it would still be subject to land board approval. Is that correct? Correct. It would, okay. The land board would still have to approve any any lease in a public meeting. Yes. Okay. And it would still be subject, I should also add it, still be subject to fair market rent as well right. as a term okay. And I know the most maximum would be 35 years, mm -hmm. right? Could the uh, negotiation of the terms be less than 35? It, it could. If 35 is what is allowed in the exi existing the specific statute. statute. Yeah. And, yeah. The statute. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then and then finally, I think it encompasses probably maybe this is my speculation on why the administration introduced this. Has there been interest from groups or parties to go through this route rather than what's currently existing in statute? Yeah, I've, I've had I can say that from my own experience, I've had at least one, I've heard of at least a couple instances where we, you know, we asked because we put out, for example, uh, properties, maybe advertise them on a, like a, uh, like a internet, like a loot net or something. Right. And we get inquiries. And when I speak to the, you know, like a broker mm -hmm. or whoever, and they say, we talk about, well, the public auction is really a big thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they say, well, you know, that that's tough, right? Knowing the process they got to go through. And then, because it also involves like, uh, going to the board, getting public notice, qualifying bidders. And if there's only one entity, it's a long time. And that, so I, I, I've heard where, you know, like I said, prospective tenants have been, did, you know, deterred from participating because of that. Understood. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hirokawa. And thank you, Chair Chang. If I can just add sure. to that. So during our Act 90 transfers, that really was one of the major issues with our pastor lessees. They could not, um, we could not negotiate with them. So, um, I suspect many of them would prefer to go over to DOA as well, but we didn't have the option to negotiate with them, but yet they were proven stewards of the land. So it would have been a good opportunity for us. And it may still be with the passage of this bill, the ability through some of those pasture leases to negotiate and carve out some of the land that we need for DOFA, but at the same time, permit them to continue on with their pasture leases. So this is, a, this is an important tool, I think, as Senator Inouye has said, to provide um, greater certainty, I would say, from a business perspective, so you can invest. You know that you're gonna, you're going, you're going to get to, you know, if you negotiate at fair market value, you're going to get the lease. Yeah. Um, the public auction, there's no guarantee, but yet you're required to invest a substantial upfront cost. Thank you, thank, thank you, Madam you. Chair. Uh, one more question. Yes. Is there a reason 
why we're using the limited term of 35 years? Um, that was just what was in the, I'm not sure exactly what the original thinking was when. But it's not, yeah. it's yeah. not part of statute, right? It's it, only the, that's what you, the terms you're using. Uh, but well, is it in statute? Yeah, it is. In 171.59 actually yeah, has I, I know, 30, I see yeah. it. But and, we didn't, you know, we didn't propose uh, changing that because we just felt. Well, you know, I reason you know, I yeah. asked that. And um, from from those businesses that want to survive on renegotiation of leases, they can't get or some have difficulty getting financing. Mm -hmm. And what? so when you you're at a threshold of less than the 35 or even 20, um, you know, it's very difficult for for a business to to get, um, you know, a, an approval from a bank. And so. I, I think, um, like in the DOA leases, um, in order to for them to apply for the loan, they got to be turned down by at least three financial institutions. But it makes it very difficult for someone to want to be in business and continue their operations. You know, if their lease expires, to try and get. Um, you know, uh, I see. Russell, uh, I would, share, well, come, come and share sorry, I guess the maybe, discussion yeah, then. Maybe, maybe my one. Because he understands. Yeah. Um, the least yeah, 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 yeah. got to speak in the mic. Russell, thank you for land division. Yeah, Chair, we'd be amenable to amending that to 65. I mean, it was, I think what Ian was trying to explain was we just stuck because that's the existing statute. We didn't play around with that. Yeah. Right? But we can understand the need. The DOA, their ability to do direct leases is up to the 65 exactly yeah and so that's the question I wanted to raise because I think there's other measures other other bills before us today that identifies that um, limited time period of and our general years. statute overall allows up to 65 years for, for like, this one was in a section of 131 171 36 that is kind of limited to like maritime, was maritime or yeah. <coughs> harbor type related and and well, that really be, is the reason. But. Well, you know, and I, I tend, I, I'm very thankful that you folks, you know, understand, mm -hmm. you know, the pleas out there in the communities for businesses to survive, mm -hmm. and you control again, like I said, the many land leases mm -hmm. that you have before you. <laughs> so, um, and just to bring up, but I, um, you know, I have a pending letter. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, for you, um, Chair, that I sent a couple of months oh. ago, um, my termite, the friend, termite the, friend, the Onos, you know, they've been in business yeah. for 20 yeah. something years, and yeah. you guys already told them you're going to auction your land, and mm. poor Rodney and his family, because his mm. son wants to take over, right. but you're going to auction his land, so um, that's pending yeah. before you, but can you stop that from we moving did. forward because you already announced that you're going to auction that particular TMK? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Okay, yeah. all right. So oh. I think they respond. Did we respond back to some? Well, we'll no, you didn't, oh, but okay. I am sorry. But, you know, okay. it's something for discussions, right. but at Very least um, we we're, need our businesses we're to survive. Still pass and then we can move forward. Yeah, and again, you know, I, part of um, helping our constituents, sure. but it, we're very thankful that you folks are amenable to, um, you know, making amends as well, but also going forward mm -hmm. so that everyone in the generations to come can understand. And then they'll be happy to apply for a lease sure. with DLNR because right now they're running away and looking for mm -hmm. other means yeah, to survive. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And sorry, folks. Um, big discussion. And I think this as time moves on um uh this is good discussions thank you so much appreciate it uh league of women voters of hawaii uh, in opposition uh, benjamin sadowski united here a uh, local five in opposition um keith neal in opposition okay uh lisa Hallett in opposition, uh, Jim McCulley in support, uh, IT is... He's present on Zoom, Chair. Oh, okay. All right. Aloha, Jim. 
Good afternoon, Chair. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to submit testimony in support of this bill. I'll stand on my testimony and I'm available for any questions you might have or the vice chair. Thanks. Okay, thank you. We have communications from uh, the Hawaii County Council member, uh, Council member Susan Leloy sends communication in support. Anyone else here wishes to speak to SB 3157? Okay, we'll move along then with uh, SB 215121. I'd like to ask anyone sitting here that needs to catch a plane. Okay. Just wanted to add that you can catch your plane and I'll move your agenda item up forward. Uh, SB 2151 relating to revocable permits. And this requires DLNR to obtain approval from the Board of Land and Re Natural Resources before taking action on a revocable permit requires six months notice for any actions taken that result in current tenant eviction prohibits tenant eviction in the year of renewal during the renewal year a dlnr aloha senator Inouye, uh, vice chair lafonte members of the committee um, we are opposing this bill we believe there's sufficient safeguards already in the bill that this is not necessary and so with hearing the previous bill, this would probably take care of the issue um, in some sense on the art of revocable permits. Maybe? Might be, it probably is a little different. This one addresses revocable permits, yeah. the other one was a lease. But this, the, quest, the request, the purpose of the bill was to provide the board the opportunity to approve this. It, they already do, so um, it's not necessary. Oh, okay. All right. Um, members, any questions of DLNR? Okay, hearing none, then we'll move along with SB 2152, and this is relating again to BLNR. This limits the discretion of the land division by requiring BLNR to approve all revoked, limited, condemned, removed, or modified public land leases or revocable permits. Okay, DLNR. Thank you, Madam <coughs> Chair Noy and Vice Chair Elefante, members of the committee, Don Chang, Chair of the Board. Um, similar to this one we're offering comments but similar to the previous bill um, the purpose of the bill was to provide the board um, the approval and there currently is a process for the board to approve that so we didn't feel this bill was necessary okay all right thank you, uh, thank you. let's see league of women voters in opposition as well as the united here local five in opposition um, Jim McCauley and IT uh, on Zoom. IT. He's present on Zoom, Chair. Jim. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Senator. We're on SB twenty one fifty three. Okay. Um, yes, I I vote uh, uh, in support of this bill. Uh, should it be amended? And uh, stand on my testimony. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, provide answers. Okay, thank you. We do have uh, communication in support from Hawaii County Council member Susan Leloy uh, testifying for Hawaiian Electric uh, in support, Dave Nagata. Anyone here wishes to speak to SB 2153? Okay, <coughs> we're moving along, members, so to SB 2035 relating to the Land Use Commission. Uh, this specifies that a simple majority of affirmative votes of the members of the Land Use Commission present at a meeting and qualified to vote is required for any boundary amendment reduces the number of days by when the Land Use Commission must act for certain actions related to amendments to the district boundaries. Uh, Land Use Commission. Thank you, Chair Dan Arnang, the Land Use Commission. Okay, thank you. And members, any questions you may have? Um, Dan is here to, um, you'll be here in case there's questions. Okay, uh, testifying for Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Okay, and you're in opposition, yeah? Yes. Just to confirm. All right. Uh, Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. Uh, Sends communication in support. Donna Wong, thousands, Hawaii's thousands, friends. 
in opposition to SB 2035. Um, anyone wishes to speak to SB 2035? Okay, members, any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed then with SB 2035. <coughs> oh, that's what we just heard. Am I correct? Oh, it's just yes, a reverse just of numbers. We just heard 2035. Okay, let's proceed with SB 2175. And this is relating to housing. Uh, this authorizes the counties to reclassify up to 100 acres of lands land areas in certain rural, urban, and agriculture districts. Uh, this also provides that at least 75% of the housing units on the land sought to be reclassified or set aside for persons and families with income at or below 100% <coughs> of the area medium income. Uh, land Use Commission. Thank you, Chair. Once again, Daniel Wardenker. Um, Thank you. Uh, Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corp. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Office <coughs> of Planning, Sustainable uh, uh, Division, uh, Sustainable Development. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Sherry from the Council Member of the Commission. My name is Aaron Chippevalo from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. We stand on our original testimony. Thank you. Department of Ag. Department of Agriculture, San Jose, has written comments, uh, written testimony, offering a comment and a recommendation. Okay, thank you so much. And members, let me know if you want to ask questions of anyone on the testifying list as well. Uh, <coughs> Hi, you realtors. Thank you. We stand on our testimony on this one. Okay, mahalo. Uh, testifying for Free Access Coalition, John and Rita Shockley. Sands communication in opposition. Uh, opposing Kupuna for the Moopuna. Okay, in opposition. Uh, Sierra Club, C Wayne, you just arrived. Mahalo. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Chair, Hello, Hello, Chair Elefante. Hello, uh, members of the committee. Wayne Tanaka, Sierra Club of Hawaii. Um, we are in strong opposition to this bill. Um, I just want to point out, uh, you know, if a development really is going to involve 75% affordable, um, they can get approval from the Land Use Commission within 45 days. And the Land Use Commission has never met, never failed to meet that deadline. Um, but what happens in those 45 days is that the Land Use Commission can look at these large scale land use changes, right? Like 100 acres of ag lands that you want to develop. They can look at it and, 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 and help make sure that we're protecting and thinking about our food security. We're protecting and thinking about our cultural practices, our public trust resources. Um, we're thinking about climate change. Uh, we're making sure that there's housing available for all income levels, expect, including and particularly the, you know, the lower and gap group levels um, and job creation. And so there's a lot that we're going to be giving up um, if we pass this measure. And, and, and for those reasons, we're opposed. And happy to answer any questions. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Life of the land in opposition. Okay. A grassroot Institute of Hawaii comments. Uh, Farm Bureau in opposition. Uh, by East Thousand Friends in opposition uh, as well. We do have quite a bit. I would say there's about 50 communications thereafter uh, in oppositions as well. Is anyone else wishes to speak to SB 2175? Members, any questions you need to uh, ask for comments? <laughs> Senator Favela. Really, I mean, there's no questions to ask to anybody because they're all in opposition, but I guess my mine is more sense of a comment. I mean, we are um, losing a lot of land, and a lot of the land is not affordable. The houses are not affordable. Uh, we need to get the developers to start building homes for the people and preserving certain things and by expediting and making larger areas for um, these districting is, is not going to help um, the poor people. That, that's how I'm looking at it. So that's the reason why I get so much opposition. Okay. You know, we're just losing all the land. And that's just my input. Thank you, Chair. Okay. 
Thank you, Senator. We'll proceed with SB 2204 relating to the Land Use Commission. This authorizes a county to initiate a land use boundary amendment to implement the county's general plan. Uh, land Use Commission. Thank you, Chair. I'm just ending on our written testimony in opposition. Um, I would point out. Uh, you know what, Dan? If you're going to make comments, you need to come and speak on the mic. Uh, we have people on Zoom land as well. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just would point out to the uh, members of the committee that, and the chair that uh, the counties already have this capability. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Group. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Office of Planning and Sustainable uh, Development. Okay. Uh, Department of Planning and Permitting. I think this is city and county. Curtis Lam uh, in support. Uh, county of Hawaii, Office of the Mayor in support. Um, county of Hawaii Planning Department in support. County of Kauai. Uh, this is Reiko Matsuyama uh, in honor of the mayor in support. Uh, Lindsay Garcia, mm -hmm. Real, Real, Realtors, thank you. A free Access Coalition in opposition as well as the Kupuna for the Mo'opuna in opposition. Uh, Sierra Club of Hawaii. Definitely again, uh, Chair Vice Chair, members of the committee, Wayne Tanaka, Circle of Hawaii. Um, we are, you know, in opposition to this measure. Um, as the Land Use Commission, um, you know, stated, the counties basically have this authority already um, to initiate petitions. The difference that with this measure is that it will, it says that the counties don't have to do technical studies. Um, and it sounds boring, right? Technical studies, who wants to do technical studies? But these are actually studies that give you that granular assessment that the Land Use Commission can use and the people can use to make sure that you know, we are um, considering you know, all those little things that are happening um, you know, on the ground as you're con con contemplating you know, the development organization of what could be very vast areas. I mean, the last bill was 100 acres. This could be, if you look at county general plans, like thousands of acres at a time. Um, so we don't want to like skip out on that, you know, that very important process to understand how we can um, assess and, and hopefully mitigate some of the consequences that would otherwise be avoidable um, through the use of this technical information. Um, so thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Alfonti. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tanaka, for your testimony. I'm reading through DPP's testimony, and they did mention that they do technical studies at the time of zone change. So does that alleviate your concerns, or you're still concerned that um, there's only that one technical study when they come for a zone change? Yeah. So the, the zone change happens after the land description takes action. Correct. And so usually what the land description does is they take that technical information and, you know, per their statutory responsibilities, um, use that to consider some of the things I mentioned earlier, like food security, you know, endangered species habitat, cultural sites, um, all these things that may be impacted. And then because they have this broader picture and this long decades of institutional memory to think about those things, then they can really tailor and very efficiently tailor um, you know, conditions and, and provisions that can avoid some, you know, what could be some pretty irrevocable impacts. Um, thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Life of the Land in Opposition, uh, Conservation Council of Hawaii in Opposition, Jim, Mc, Jim McCauley uh, on Zoom. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm in support. I'll stand on my testimony. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, Tamara, Tamara Paulton uh, in support. Uh, we do have, I would say, close to 25 communications in opposition. Um, in support, Hawaii County Council, Susan Liloy, in support, uh, Council Chair Ellis Lee, in support, uh, that's County of, uh, of uh, Maui. Uh, and I believe this is members, this is the mayor's, uh, the pack, mayor's package. Um, Dan, uh, question, can you?
can you come up and explain if there's you're already recognizing and doing um, what they're asking or what's the difference with with what the mayors are asking for? Well, the big difference, as was pointed out by the by Wayne, was is that um, they're not required to do technical studies. I'm not even sure that that's constitutional because we have certain requirements that we have to meet in rendering a decision. And without those technical studies, we will be unable to determine whether or not there is any impact on cultural gathering rights, which is required under the Kapa'a Kai line of cases. And we will also be uncertain as to whether or not there are any public trust doctrine issues, which are <clears throat> implicated by the same line of cases, um, including water rights and the rest. The, the, concept of large-scale um, uh, redistricting without technical studies is one that could have severe implications on food security, cultural gathering rights, um, water, and, and the rest. And we just don't know Does that what that include environmental EISs or assessments as well? Yeah, the, tech, the, the exemption from technical studies would exempt them from Chapter 343, which is of concern. Um, you know, there's used to, usually, usually has to be a trigger um, for Chapter 343 to apply. We wouldn't even know if there was a trigger in this case because okay. we wouldn't have anything. Um, so. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else sitting in the audience? Uh, anyone wish to speak to SB 2204? Sure. We'll yes. Senator Favela. Yeah, I'm just going to talk from experience, Chair. Um, this is a bad idea. My community is a community of suffering from this county's bypassing, undermining, uh, you name it, we got them. Cultural sites, water sites, water rights, you name them, they took it. And you know how smart the city is? Well, I'm not saying they're smart. Um, <laughs> the people that came up with this, Chair, um, Big way food that everybody in this state and probably around the world know I'm against. They made the permit for Ernie Laudem to put in the water for, the, for their hotels. Never went change them, and they never had to change them. They never had to tell you, me, or anybody else that they was going to use them for a wave pool. That's one. In, in a particular district? Ever Beach. Okay. <laughs> As I said, okay. I, I know this. I was on the board, never told us this. Two, what is bad, is that they were smart. They didn't make the project one time. They took it out on three miners. If anybody know about permitting, three miners, separate miners, you don't have to let the community know. So they would cut this project up, which should have been one major, so all the community could input. By giving the counties, I'm not saying all counties, i just saying the county that I work with, this kind of purview is suicide because they're gonna just rape the communities. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. that's, that's what they did to Ever Beach. Because when I asked Ernie Lau about the water, all he could say is that we have or we have it. But the actual permit that they took out was for the low density hotels, not for a wave pool. Because if they took it out for a wave pool, two million gallons a day to take to fill them up. One million gallons a year evaporate fresh drinking water in a water crisis. Why you think they won't hide them? And you think we're gonna trust the cities now? Well, sorry, Honolulu County, I don't like making it to any other county, but I just say <laughs> Honolulu County. Okay. I cannot, All right. I, I, I cannot support that. Okay. Cannot. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Thank you, Senator. All right, let's proceed with SB 2129, and this is relating to historic preservation. Uh, this expands the definition of, quote, historic property, unquote, for purposes of the Historic Preservation Program. This exempts state projects on state-owned buildings from State Historic Preservation Division review unless the affected property is more than 100 years old or on or being added to the Register of Historic Places or the National Register of Historic Places. Okay, Shipti, DLNR, Dr. Downing. Um, I'll ask Alan to come up, but this. Um, oh, okay, yeah. he's here too, oh, yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. But just two points that I'd like to make. Um, one is 
the state should be setting itself as an example to take care of our own buildings. And two, I did want to provide in our testimony, we also clarified, this is the first time that our architectural branch is fully staffed. And their review time is down to 17 days. So they are being much more responsive. So some of these concerns we think can be addressed with the existing system and process that we have without the necessity of changing the definition of historic buildings. Yeah, we're happy to, to add to assisting Shipti yes, for the are. many years yeah. that they went without staffing. And so we appreciate your moving along with the vacancies. Dr. Downey, how's our archaeologist staff? Have you found anybody applying for this these positions? And I mean, you know, we all gave them a raise. We're competing with the private sector, but I understand uh, no takers yet. Um, well, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, I hope you give me good news today. Uh, oh, well, okay. <laughs> The best news I can give you is that we're working on it. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, this is these both of these are, are very important issues to the division and the department. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we continue to work on it uh, and we will, you know, I mean, I will say that when we have gotten positions advertised, we have gotten qualified applicants. And, you know, that was not always true before the before the legislature stepped up and gave us that extra money. Yes. Um, you know, we had one position that, you know, we went an entire year with a, sing, a single applicant, not a single qualified applicant, but even okay. one applicant. So it's made a huge difference. Okay, moving along. Hopefully we can fill those positions. What you, We gave you, what, three or five? How many? <laughs> How many new positions? Yeah, So eight ar archaeologists. Eight, eight archaeologists. Okay, and then presently we have how many? Um, we have a total of 10. 10. Oh. That's already okay. Those are existing yes, positions, yes. yeah. And we have okay. one of them just went vacant, but all the rest of them are filled. Okay. Thank you. But it's really interesting that for some reason in this decade, it seems like they're doing a lot more work. There's more mm -hmm. things that are found out there um, that's actually getting into the way of development i mean it's kind of eerie and kind of scary uh, look at my elementary school the smallest school in on the big island when we started developing members trying to build a new extension the building the whole area was condemned because we found ev i mean just a couple of months steph and i were on the big island to go look at it and now it's moved into other grounds. So aside from only the area that where the building was to be, found out that it's pretty much in other areas and that's old plantation camps. Um, but so sad, so, so that, that high heel school students are now going to Pepeke, Papaiko mm -hmm. Elementary School, which I'm glad that within the Hilo district, 10 minute town, right? Mm -hmm. It's close by, mm -hmm. so they could transform the students and the, and the entire class. I mean, we only had six grades. So, yeah, yeah, but, um, and then I find out there's more EVs are showing up in many other areas where developments are occurring. And so uh, you got busy, <laughs> busy work coming in um, and uh, it's un unfortunate that that's occurring. If I could just add, historically, if you can think about pre-contact, there were probably between, depends upon what historian you, you talk to, but between 300 to 800,000 Native Hawaiians, they are buried someplace. They're not buried in cemeteries. They're generally buried where they lived. So if you find places where um, Hawaiians lived, it is very likely you will find subsurface burials. So you're right. We're going to find we're going to find many more. At some point in time, I would like. My desire is from a department standpoint, both from archaeology as well as um, water resources, that we are engaging these two agencies in particular during the planning stage, not during the permitting stage, because that really is too late. But if we engage them during the permitting planning stage, when you're doing an EIS. You have to do the archaeological, That's you have right. to do the work. 
because by the time we go down to the permitting stage, it's really too late, right? Not too many choices, not too many options, buildings are up. So I, again, that's not before yeah. you at this point in time, but we will look at a probably a strategic um, review, a better way to avoid impacts to subsurface historic properties in, in during the planning stage rather than the permanent stage. Well, another thing too, we hope the counties are listening to us too, because they're the ones that approve all these developments. Yes. And from my island and a former mm -hmm. as a former mayor as well, for those who are seeking to add to adding commercial businesses uh, or any developments mm -hmm. in Kailua, in Kona, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to happen mm -hmm. because they're all the burials uh, has been occurred, particularly in the Keahu district and in Kailua town. So the Ali'i drive will never happen mm -hmm. as well. Um, that's why we had to get rid, well, not we, but Kamehameha schools. You remember, most of you who are old enough, you remember the Kona Lagoon Hotel and the Keahu Beach Hotel? Why it was dismantled? I, it, I mean, I worked at the Kona Lagoon Hotel. You can't anymore, and that was decent, you know, because of the burials and the heals out there. But um, anyway, uh, and we don't see you very often because you don't have many threatening bills, but it's good for us to understand on the historic preservation side where you are. Good to see you, but thank you very much. It's good to see you. You'll good. see us a lot this session. Okay. All Two. right. Got, yeah, I see the next okay. one as well. Uh, Senator Favela, questions for me? This is something that I guess is, is for what you said. Um, but what is the parameters and, and how we can go around um, to prevent in this before the, even like the EIS, the planning part? Because even before, and I'm just going to bring up Maui, yeah, they was told, they knew, and the permit still was issued. And I'm just going to talk about one area, Safeway. They dug up the bones, they relocated, put it on their property, and then they made a little fence around it. That was royal bones. That was our, you know, families. So I, 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 I'm all for progress, but not for when we have to relocate, knowing they was going to dig up bones, because the families who gave them the historical nest and the archaeologists and all of that, but... Maui County still, can I see people there now, issued the permits to desecrate not a few bones, a graveyard. And to me, you know, again, with one or two that we had in Neva Beach and the relocations and not the proper burial, I find very offensive that, you know, we got to wait to the permitting, which what you said, we should go do all the EIA and make sure all of that is done. But if somebody tells you, uh, chair, um, director, if there is bones in this area, what, what is the process or in the sense of developing that area? And you raise a really good point, Senator Favela. I mean, Maui Lani, where they found where Safeway was built, um, that area was a well-known site. It's a sand dune. Exactly. Hawaiians buried yeah. in sand dunes. It's, so there's no... And, and I don't, and I'm sorry, I don't know the number, the, the bill be, that we are preparing, uh, proposing this session. Some of this is um, having better tools. So we are proposing a bill that's going to look at um, holding archaeolo archaeological firms accountable yeah. for fulfilling mitigation plans. So a lot of the plans in Maui Lani, there were burial treatment plans, there were preservation plans, mitigation plans. But after they get their permit, there's no follow-up. Yeah. So this next You're developer right. comes in and they do something, but no one has held the previous um, archaeological firm or developer yeah. accountable for completing, complying with those mitigation right. measures. So that is a bill that we're coming in this year, which we believe will address some of the concerns that you've raised, right. is how, do, how can we be more proactive to ensure that they have complied with all of their mitigation measures yes. under their their you know whatever approvals they get so that's one thing the other thing is we do have to have better i mean rather than letting the development well this is a little editorial but i mean we know where there are highly sensitive areas areas where there's sand dunes areas where there's people where previous 
um, where Native Hawaiians live, where we where we find land commission awards, we should be we should be identifying those as high sensitivity areas and staying away from those, rather than trying to trying to force a development in that area. So I think that there are other tools, but as I said, I, I think we have to be utilizing this review process earlier in the process, identifying where do we have water that's that's available for a development? Where do we minimize the risk of, of adversely impacting historic properties? Right. Let We should be trying to identify those sensitive areas as well as water resource areas so that developments fit into into appropriate places rather than we do it we do it after the fact yes so that's just a little editorial but i recognize your concern and we do have a bill that's trying to address yeah, please let me know i will tell you why that's exactly what you said so zippies <laughs> in my community wasn't supposed to be built there mm -hmm. but the landowner did all the preliminaries so no zippies never came to the community on bill mm -hmm. and everybody went because it was right next to the graveyard Everybody was upset. Mm. It's exactly what you just said, because the previous person don't say, hey, Senator, we, this yeah. is the problems we're having on this site. They just give them, and then these guys go all through the area, and then they realize a harnessness that they just went, right. went by into. So I appreciate that, Bill. Thank you. Thank so you, Jim. If I could make, if I could make a, a few comments. So, uh, I mean, this is, this is not helpful, but it's the reality. Places that are attractive places to live today have been attractive places to live for a thousand years. Yep. And there are always going to be conflicts between the living and the dead. I mean, and we have to figure out a way to accommodate that. In terms of your, very, your specific question, at the end of the day, it's up to the permit, I mean, excuse me, it's up to the county to decide whether or not to issue a permit. We can tell them, here's what we think is gonna happen, or here's what we know is going to happen as an effect to historic properties archaeological sites or burial sites but ultimately it's the county's decision and um you know we that, that's just the way it is we have but nothing you send in your we your, do, te we, your testimony yeah. on that particular we, we do give like them when the when, when they ask your, when they ask we do respond isn't that automatic though no. with the counties no, no. no. the no. county the counties what the 6e says is that the counties have to send a permit to us if they determine that the project has a potential to affect historic properties. So if they make a good faith determination or make a determination at all that it won't have an effect, they don't send it to us. I mean, and you know, to be clear, for example, city and county here in Honolulu gets about 100,000 100, permit applications a year. Thank God we don't see all of them. Um, you know, most of them are things, you know, a lot of them are electrical things, you know, internal improvements but they you know they are they are more swamped than we are so that's i mean but no it's not automatic and frankly i'm glad it's not so we won't throw the counties under the bus oh no but, we're not but, but, but i've we already people you, you won't i've yeah, already yeah, done yeah, it yeah, so. yeah, but I, I i recognize i think a better solution is at what point in time do we start bringing yes. in historic preservation maybe? much earlier yeah. but this is an additional well tool. you know that's kind of interesting I, I didn't realize, and I hope my administration <laughs> did send in requests for your comments, but I thought it was an automatic thing that no. the counties does because I remember the developments that occur and then the department, mm. planning department on the counties automatically kind of trigger mm. to the state if there's a close, if there's a state highway mm. or water uh, and I thought automatically Shipti was one of them that they must receive the the recommendations or their opinions uh, before they act on a development. So I guess it depends on the counties. Then yeah. I guess. Well, it depends on their. I mean, sometimes they make a, a good faith decision. Sometimes they just I make mistakes. I didn't realize. I thought it was automatic. Uh, Brad, just let me know. Maybe we should work on a resolution. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Just one, just one quicker. The reason why. Um, um, Chair, you can see that the counties don't share root forests. They oh. told Kurt Caldwell not to oh. do those of that pop. Mm -hmm. And he went right ahead and not even five minutes into the pushing, they found bones. I, I you know what I mean? So that's exactly yeah. why we got to start the conversation early. 
Okay. Thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you very Good much. Good discussions. <clears throat> Bear with us, folks. I think you're all getting educated, like all of us here as well. Um, to continue, uh, SB 2129, Mahialani Cipher, Ko'olau Foundation. Aloha. Aloha, my Kako. Aloha. Aloha. Um, the Ko'olau Foundation is in support of Senate Bill 2129, but we wish to express our concern regarding the proposed amendment regarding state projects. We wanted the legislature to define explicitly what a state-owned building would be. Can this change be used to include large-scale state-sponsored construction projects, like, for example, another interstate highway? If so, the Ko'olau Foundation has reservations about the language and would oppose the bill's passage. Um, we, we know that in other times when there's been litigation about how to interpret a law, if the law is not really clear and it can be interpreted several different ways, it can cause conflicts in, in uh, litigation. So we want to minimize that by showing legislative intent with this bill. My understanding is this bill is meant to affect to apply to buildings, not construction not projects, right? So that's what our concern is. If I could offer some manao about the earlier conversation you had on this bill regarding EV. I think back, uh, well, there's two, two thoughts on EV. Number one, EV only just wants to be respected. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. don't want to be treated, mistreated or mishandled. They want to be located in a place where they can be rest for forever and not dug up and disturbed. Um, Number two, they have mana, they have power. So to have a cemetery next to your house is very good, it's not bad, it's not a bad thing. Um, but I agree with the earlier speakers that the, the discussion about it must be done earlier in the planning process. And um, relocation of EV is not necessarily bad if it's handled correctly with respect. Um, if it's a large number of EV, that's a cemetery, you should leave that alone. That's everybody knows that. So just so your comments uh, was um, this measure. <clears throat> I read it. It's state-owned buildings, but yeah. you're concerned that uh, just to ensure that it's not related to state highways or any large okay. construction projects, except for state-owned buildings. Okay. Yes. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation sends communication in opposition. Um, BIA Hawaii, building industry, uh, sends communication in support, um, Society for Hawaii, Hawaiian Archaeology, uh, Tamara Luthi in opposition. And we're on SB 2129. I think that's it for now. Anyone here wishes to continue to speak on SB 2129? Right, let's proceed then to another historic property measure, SB 2835, and this amends the definition of historic property to include buildings and structures that predate August 21st, 1959. Uh, DLNR. Thank you, Chair Noah. Members of the committee, Don Shang, Chair of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. Also appearing is Alan Downer, who is the administrator for the State Historic Preservation Division. Um, we have provided written testimony, and we've offered some comments and concerns. And we're available to answer any questions you may have. OK. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Hawaii Realtors. Thank you, Ms. Ann. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, Naya, Evan Owen. Aloha. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Aloha. You have our written testimony. I just wanted to emphasize the need for, uh, you know, this bill t attempts to balance the issues at hand regarding, uh, you know, the expedited nature of, re of reviews for critical infrastructure as well as affordable housing projects, while still allowing for the process to occur for historic truly historic buildings to be reviewed and put on the register and be able to qualify for ship to review at that point. Um, that we feel as though this really you know, helps um, balance the inter interest at hand. So 
uh, you know, we'll be standing on that and uh, available for any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation uh, in opposition uh, in support Hawaii Yimbi. Damien Waikaloa in support. A Society for Hawaiian Archaeology in opposition. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to SB 2835 coming up? Thank you. State your name for the record. My name is Aloha. Ted. Aloha. My name is Ted Bolin. I'm speaking in opposition. I think the bill makes too big a change uh, from the current situation and would therefore cause some stories to be cut out of our history. Uh, the turning to the historic uh, registry from a flat number of years uh, would cause some conflicts between the state and federal programs. And I think, I think it's very well intention. I appreciate the intent. Uh, I think we probably need more funding at CHIPD so that there are not delays on projects. But I think this bill tries to make too big a change in a way that would affect our history in Hawaii. And I think that's unfortunate. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else wishes to speak to SB 2835? Hearing none, we'll proceed with SB 2300 and this as well relating to historic preservation. Uh, this extends the sunset date for the historic preservation tax credit to December 31, 2030, and incrementally increases the cap of the total tax credits from 1 million to the 2025 taxable year to 4 million in the 2030 taxable year. Uh, Attorney General. Not present on Zoom, Chair. Good afternoon, Chair. Oh, good Members afternoon. Of uh, Deputy Attorney General Tammy Kanashiro, we submitted testimony on this, comments only. Um, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Okay. And members, when if there's any questions, thanks for the Attorney General's presence here today. Uh, let's see, DLNR. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. <coughs> right, Don Shang, Deputy Attorney Chair of the Board of Land and Natural Resources, members of the committee. We do stand, stand in support of this bill. We believe this bill is um, it is uh, a incentive for people to to preserve their their historic properties. And we have, we're available to answer any questions. Okay, and no problem with the credit, no. as noted yep. on the table. Yep. As long no. as we can extend it. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You. Uh, let's see. Department of Taxation. Afternoon, Aloha. Chair, Vice Chair, this is Rachel Rizzo on behalf of the Department of Taxation. We stand on our written testimony after comments. I'm okay. available for questions. Uh, thank you for that as well. Appreciate it. Historic, Pres uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation. Okay. Uh, Sends communication in support. Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Tom, are you on or representative on Zoom? Yes, good afternoon, uh, Chair and members of the committee. This is Jade McMillan on behalf of Camille Machika for the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We've submitted some comments on the measure and looked on our ring. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, communication from Will Caron uh, with comments. Okay, is there anyone else wishes to speak to SB 2300? We'll proceed then with SB. Sure, yes. for clarification. Yes. So Senator we're amending the... Who do you want to? Oh, ask? no, just for clarification from you, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know anybody. Okay. Uh, so this is amending the definition of the historical properties to include buildings and structures predating 1959. Yeah. Uh, well, this uh, measure uh, has to do with extension of the tax credit because it would um, expire. And so what's happening is uh, we're asking for an extension uh, as well and DLNR. Um, uh, tends to agree with to continue that. Oh, okay, so they can still get tax credit. Yes. Shucks, I told you it's going to take away the tax credit from Kurt Coldwell's house. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Chair. That's the okay. I needed. All right. 
Okay, well, we learned something new now today <laughs> from you. <laughs> okay, let's move on to SB 3154, and this is relating to regulation of archaeological activities. <clears throat> okay, do we have comments from you? Oh, yes, yeah, we yeah. do. This yes. Is a, this is a um, good, good afternoon, Chair. You know, I, uh, Vice Chair Elefante and members of the committee. Um, Don Chang, Chair of the Board of Land and Natural Resources, also with me is Alan Downer. This is the bill, Senator Favela, that I was talking about. This is the bill that would give us the enforcement action authority for people who are not complying with, with, um, with their mitigation measures. So this is an admin bill, and we strongly support this bill. Um, this is a tool that we need to ensure some of the kind of questions that we were previously talking about. And we are available to answer any questions you may have. OK. Thank, Thank you. you. Mahalo. This is the one you referred yes, to in your yes, communication previously. Yes. OK. Uh, thank you. Let's see. Kamakana Ferreira, Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And we have her comments in our testimonial, which talks about it. Okay. Mahalo. Uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation uh, in support as well, uh, including Tamara Paulton. Is there anyone else wishes to speak to SB 3154? Okay. We'll move along to SB 2756, and this is relating to camps. It repeals the prohibition on overnight camps in agriculture districts. Uh, Office of Planning. Okay, uh, Mahalo. Department of Ag. Okay. Comments, yeah. Okay. Mahalo. Um, testifying for the Breath and Barefoot Yoga and Maui Surfer Girls. Kara Griffin. Okay. Sends communication in support. Um, Camp Olo Valu. Okay. Sends communication in support. Uh, Farm Bureau in opposition. Uh, Kathleen Pahinui in opposition, uh, as well as Tamara Paulton in opposition. Is there anyone else wishes to speak on this measure? Please come forward. Aloha. And state your name for the record. Aloha, Chair and members of the committee. My Aloha. name is my name is Rory Frampton, and I think um, you might have called Camp Oluwalu. Yes. Uh, I might be under there. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. mention the name. Yeah. Uh, yes, Rory. Proceed. Yeah. So I'm a land use planning consultant with over 30 years experience uh, on Maui. I'm based on Maui. I was retained by Camp Oluwalu to do some research into this matter and help support the development of this bill. I grew up on Maui, and I'm familiar with the four campgrounds that are in the Ag District on Maui, uh, having played around and had fun there for a lot of my life. Um, there's only, when I looked around the other islands, I could only find two other campgrounds in the Ag, dis Ag District. Those were on Oahu. All of these campgrounds were um, built before the state land use law or developed before the state land use law. I support the passages of this bill, which we return to the status quo that's been in effect since at least 1990, which requires special, special permits for campground, overnight campgrounds in the state Ag District. The history of the uh, history has shown us that there's been very little impact on ag lands. Uh, in my research, I only found one expansion via special use permit over the last 30 years, and it was six acres on Maui. And those six acres are uh, heavily or are in heavy agricultural use as well as the campgrounds. I looked at all the islands zoning codes on Kauai. Uh, campgrounds are prohibited in the ag district, so they're not allowed on Oahu. They're not listed, so they're not allowed. On the Big Island, they're only allowed in two of the subzones, uh, the family ag and the other ag. Uh, it, they're not allowed in intensive agricultural districts on, on the Big Island. We have the um, Boy Scout camp at Honaka'a, and it could be in ag. Okay, it might That's be. That's the one on the highway. Okay. After, when you buy your malasadas, the text <laughs> drive in and head to Waimea. It's minutes away from there. Okay, so if, if I they think are... it's in ag, um, 
And then there's the Girl Scout camp that I used to take my Girl Scouts as a senior um, advisor, as a student. Um, we have a Girl Scout camp at um, next door to Pohakaloa, but that's on the highway. But I think the Girl Scout camp, and I'm not sure, and maybe you can, we can, you can share with us this measure, the Girl Scout camp, uh, Girl Scouts own the property. And so I'm not sure if, if this would affect them, um, but that's the only two that, uh, and then of course, Volcano National Park conservation. Uh, is in mm -hmm. conservation, I think, across the highway on Highway 11. But I hope that our Girl Scout camp is not affected by this. I'm a lifetime Girl Scout. Yeah. But anyway, um, but your, this uh, measure it has only to do with um, in agriculture lands. It's agricultural yeah. lands. Uh, most of the campgrounds in Hawaii are in so conservation or urban. Um, there's very few in, that are in the Ag District. Okay. Uh, if if they for the grandfathered ones like the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, we have those on Maui as well. If they want to do an expansion, like the Boy Scout camp on Maui did an expansion of their facilities, they were required to come in and get a special permit. Required a public hearing. And that was from the county. Yes, okay. the county because it was under 15 acres. It was a state land use oh. commission permit, but under 15 acres, so the the Maui County yeah. was able to approve it. But it's public hearing, notification of neighbors. Um, this bill wouldn't change any of that. It wouldn't overrule the counties such as Kauai and Oahu where campgrounds are prohibited. If through the zoning ordinance, because as you guys know, the zoning in the Ag District is controlled by both the county and the state. If one says no, then they're not allowed. So it wouldn't overrule the home rule uh, of the counties and it would just return to the status quo that's been in effect for over the last 30 years. So we think it would have minimal impact um, on, on the Ag lands. Okay. Okay, Senator Alafanti, yeah. question um, for? Mr. Frampton, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for being here and thank you for your testimony. So currently now, do you have a current lease where you're operating on Maui? So I'm a consultant to Camp Oluwalu. Um, or do, does they, your they, client or they, have? They own the land. They own the land, oh. yes. Okay, because I know in the description of the bill, it says there's a couple of leases expiring. There's, um, there's special use permits, which or special permits, which is what they had to get. So the, the Boy Scouts and Camp Oluwalu did some expansions. So their grandfather, their grandfather status no longer occurred. So because they were doing some expansions, they had to come in and get state land use commission special use permits. For for Oluwalu, there's this due their ex, it's it, and there's a time frame on that. So you have to come in and get time extensions. Right. And Oluwalu's is up soon, and so is the Boy Scout camp. Based on this Supreme Court ruling. They can't get an extension with other special use permits, and they would have to come in and for change. District boundary amendment. They would have to come in for a district boundary amendment to urban, which in both of these cases would be out of context with the surrounding area. So their other choice would be if this passes, they could just come in and ask for a continuation mm -hmm. of the and at a public hearing, and there would be review and comment by neighbors. Okay. okay. I, I understood. I think the concern that I have is when we open it up. While I understand for your clients, but if we're opening it up to other types of not permitted uses on ag land and what people may not be intending to do, that happens sometimes, you know, in that, not in your case, but mm -hmm. that would just be one of my concerns. That's all I have, Chair. Yeah, Thank in, you. In which case, you know, these, it's, it, it's going to be looked at on a case by case situation. Sure. You're not saying they're automatically allowed, they have to go through a discretionary review process. Okay. Understood. Okay. Thank you. So Thank the you. permitting process remains the same? If this is passed, yes. Oh, okay. Same okay. as it has been in the last 30 years. Okay. Or more. Otherwise, I, you know, just to ensure that this doesn't affect those existing ones, perhaps grandfather it. But I think as long as the understanding that um, the permitting process still has to be abided by. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So no additional language change that you see in this bill? No, I think okay. just striking that one clause out returns us to, again, well, the same situation yeah. it has been for the last 30 plus years. And, and most of them are in that years or even older. Oh, yes. Those yeah. camps. Okay. Yes. All right. And we certainly appreciate that because that's opportunities for youngsters to attend those camps uh, as well. Not in this situation, I don't think. This 
Campo Luwalo. I mean, and you guys, so what's, the, what's the rate for a, 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 a Tentalo at Campo Luwalo if I was a visitor? Oh, uh, I think the visitor rates are up in the high hundreds or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the Tentalos, but there's campgrounds available and there's car parking available, and there are a lot of the local people that come and camp there on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But predominantly, your business is visitors, right? Yes. For that particular camp. For that particular camp. Yeah. And that's on Maui. That's on Maui, yeah. All right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Okay. Yes. And uh, anyone else wishes to speak to SB 2756? Okay. Here, Aloha. Aloha, my Kako. Aloha. I'm speaking uh, as myself as a more than 50 years of community advocacy watching land use change and development occur. Um, I'm worried about unintended consequences such as uh, Senator Alfonte uh, was concerned about. I love the camps. I think they should be camps. I don't have a problem with camps even on ag land, but unintended consequence could be the campgrounds could be turned into um, like dormitories, eventually like visitor accommodations, they become tourism on ag lands. And I, I think we have to find the balance. So in the language of the bill, it would be good if there's some kind of concern raised to minimize it, to keep it to campgrounds that take up no more than a certain percentage of the ag land. We don't want to lose the food production. So if you could put in some cautionary language to guard against unintended consequences, because we, you and I have seen that happen over the years. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and just to add um, the uh, comment that I had made about those existing uh, campgrounds was that um, that this measure will apply only to the camps that's already in operation. So I don't think it's going to, if we do that uh, in the ag districts. Uh, just to make sure that there's no other proliferation of um, additional uh, campgrounds um, or uh, that's one of the recommendations right. that we had as well. Or we can include comments as well into um, the committee report. Senator sure. Pavela. Yeah, yeah. So, so from my, my comment is that we, we understand it's a campground and it's a, it's a for business. But what is it going to stop them from expanding again? What was the re what was the reason for the first expansion that they lost a grandfather clause um, and jeopardized their <clears throat> um, restrictions? Because maybe they don't expand them for business, or did they expand it for more camping for the kids and whatnot? Because if they did expand because they needed to do a business over there, and that's the reason why they lost the grandfather clause for the camp area, then that's kind of kind of hard for me to swallow if um, now it's being run as just a business and it was just a camp, so. Can I ask, um, can you review again the permits from the counties that you need to apply for? Um, I'm, like for the, the different permit. counties? Yes. Yeah, so Kauai, you can't apply. Uh, Oahu, you, there's no permits that allow for it. Uh, Big Island, it's only in two of the sub-districts. Uh, and in those districts, the state law would, prov uh, would, would control, and you'd have to apply for a special permit under the state land use law. And it would either be the local planning commission or the land use commission, depending on the acreage, that would um, make a decision on that. And then for Maui County, it requires a, a, a state special permit. So for the counties that do allow it, it would be controlled by the state special use, special permit process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So if they wanted to do any expansion or anything like that, they'd have to come back in for it. Oh, okay. okay. So sure. there's parameters and the permitting process that one has to apply. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just a quick one. We'll follow one follow. Sorry. Yes, Senator for, for the boys in the boy, um, boy scouts and your camp. I know you can answer for the boys and the boy scouts, but what, what was the reason for you guys' expansion and then jeopardizing you guys' grandfather clause in on the campgrounds and moving forward, knowing that 
if you guys expand, that you guys possible be losing the lease in the future? Well, um, so Maui County allows for the campgrounds if you apply for a special use. In the case of Camp Oluwalu, a lot of the camp areas, some of it was on, it was developed in 1956. And some of the land, some of the cabins and the campsites were actually on state owned land and they were in the conservation district. So the idea was, and it was becoming very popular. So the idea was to move into the ag area, which was behind it a little further away from the ocean. It was an expansion of the operation, but there were some reasons behind it. And it was to put it in an area that was better than being on state land or in the conservation district. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank one, you. Sen one, Senator. Yeah, one follow-up. So if there were no- Senator Elefanti. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. If, if there were no um, measures before the legislature, because of the Supreme Court ruling, you would have to go through the district boundary amendment at Maui County to classify as urban, is that correct? That's correct, because it's, un, it's a state land use district boundary amendment, but in these two cases, it's under 15 acres, so you'd have to go to the county council right. and change it from ag to urban. Okay, now, as a f one last follow up sure. on that, Madam Chair. In Maui County's general plan, does they, do they classify this area as urban or ag? Ag. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Madam you. Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll proceed then. Just to add any other comments uh, or testifies for SB 2756. Okay. Last measure, SB 2176, and this is relating to tort liability. This clarifies that persons or minors that enter private property with or without charge by a landowner for recreational purposes have no cause of action unless exempted under the law. Uh, Attorney General. Chair, Vice Chair, good afternoon. We'll rest on our good testimony, uh, but we have one point that we'd like to highlight uh, for members of the committee and for Chair and Vice Chair. Oh, yes, uh, identify yourself. Oh, Ro Deputy Attorney General Roy Kwan. Ro okay. I, I'm, I'm actually standing in for Robin Keisha. For Robin, yes. Okay. So she's uh, needed yeah, actually, at another the difference right there, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, the concern that the department has on this particular uh, bill that's being proposed is ultimately we feel that it may be superfluous. This bill seeks to add a provision to Chapter 520 adding an assumption of risk doctrine. That is basically an affirmative defense. However, 520-3 already relieves private and landowners of any duty. So as we know, without a duty, there cannot be a case of negligence. So we ultimately feel that, again, it, it is superfluous in a sense because it's going, going about in a roundabout way. If 523 already absolves these landowners, which again, if we look at 523, and I do have copies uh, of the statute, if Chair, Vice Chair, and the members of the committee would like to review it, it covers what is being proposed, that these are private landowners who are allowing others to access their land for recreational purposes. Uh, so again, uh, you know, long story short, as Ms. Kishi pointing out in her testimony, I think this bill creates a lot of ambiguity um, it creates a lot of confusion and ultimately because it sort of goes in contravention to 523 it might invite litigation rather than quell it thank you I have, I'm, thank you. I'm available for questions thank you uh, librado Cobian Aloha thank you for bearing with us today <clears throat> My name is Lee Cobian. I'm with Oahu Motorsports Association and AAC, and I'm in support of this uh, bill. Um, I'm also an environmental contractor. Uh, that specific section that the uh, Deputy Attorney General was referring to, what we added on there was um, liability protection for potential environmental exposure. And the reason we're doing that is because um, the city is this year will be accepting a approximately 400 acres uh, from the Navy for recreational purposes. Uh, it's been about 25 years in the making and we're finally gonna uh, finalize the transfer. A lot of uh, military property 
are, have some trace contaminants. And um, we wanted to add that to the liability. I say trace contaminants because um, the soil, the level is, even though there are toxins, it's low. If you compare it to the toxins of a Barbie doll, a Barbie doll has more <laughs> chemicals in it than the soil. And, uh, but there are, there's always frivolous lawsuits uh, regarding potential contaminants uh, in, in soils. And that's one of the reasons we, we brought this, because this actually this bill was from 2021, and we brought it back to include uh, liability protection of potential environmental exposure. Okay, are you um, or the sports um, association planning on applying for a lease or something no, for use uh, of the properties? The property is, uh, leases are prohibited. It oh, would okay. be under the jurisdiction of the Sydney County Parks and Recs, just like Hegel's, uh, he, uh, Hilo's um, uh, park, race park. And um, so it would still be under Parks and Recs. Mm -hmm. And so we're just advocating for the use for motorsports on that. We're working with the mayor on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is a measure that um, will assist you folks. Uh, well, it's assist anyone who uses it for recreation, whether oh, it's okay. pickleball or whatever. Because oh, okay. um, the reality is all military land has some form of contaminants. And we, we use a lot of military property for recreation, whether it's horses, pickleball, tennis, whatever. Uh, the soil has trace amounts of phthalates, carcinogens, toxins. It's, you know, the military's been dumping thousands of gallons of fuel for the last 50 years. Okay, yeah. all right. And that's the reason we put it in. We also got a letter from the Attorney General with recommendations okay. of certain parts of it, and we okay. complied with all that. All right, thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you very Question. much. Question? Yes. Senator Favela. A couple of things. Um, under the Navy's <clears throat> gifting this to the city for parks and recreation, the definition of motorsports with racing stock cars or straightaways, is that considered under parks and rec? Um, under motorsports recreation is under parks and rec. All the neighbor island par uh, no, no, I'm not talking about under the neighbor islands. I'm talking about the one in Kalai Law. Uh -huh. Because I know you've been trying to do this for a while, and I guess you just waited to one different mayor change, but under the Navy's giving, and this is out to HCD and the Navy, yeah. race cars is not considered a recreation park. Pickleball is, softball is, Under what basketball. definition are you referring to? Well, the definition that the Navy gave to this parks and rec. So. The, the hold on, slow down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, excuse me. I got a question. This is a national park for? service. I work, who, do, who do you work for? I work for an environmental company. No, no, who do you work for now in this building? On the building? I'm a volunteer for Rep Alcos. Okay, because earlier you paid. testified that you work for our Rep Alcos. I, I, I'm a, a volunteer staffer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't get paid. Good for you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Okay. Okay, thank you. Chair, uh, may I just follow up? Uh, yes, please. Come on up, Attorney yeah, General. Up yes. Deputy Attorney General Roy Fong, once again, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, we would like to point out, again, I, I'm not sure what the end game of the testimony that we just heard was, but Chapter 520 is wholly inapplicable to government entities, mm -hmm. be it the state, mm -hmm. or the city, mm -hmm. or the county. So we okay. just wanted to make sure that that was pointed out for the committee. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate okay. that. Okay. Uh, Evan, Owe. Uh, let's see, testifying for uh, the Hawaii Association for Justice in Opposition. Yeah, okay. uh, Terry yeah. Leitker in support, Rick Dell in support, David Lewis in support. Okay, is there anyone else wishes to speak to SB 2176? Hearing none. Um, yes, Senator uh, Alafonte. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Question for the representative from the Attorney General's. Yeah. Yes, question. Yeah. Um, you can come back to the table. <laughs> thank you, if you don't mind. All right. Yeah. So, what if we were to accept the AG's amendments with the exception of the assumption of risk provision? Would that still be a concern for the AG? I mean, that's pretty much the premise of the yeah. whole bill, right, is the assumption of risk. Right. So AG's office would still have concerns, right? We, we would still have concerns in the sense that uh, 
we have issues prior testimony with including the the phrase or minors right and then of course with the award of, of attorney's fees and costs okay. but you know assumption of risk is the overarching issue in this particular bill so yes okay. Thank you. Yeah, so Thank you. From common law and All staff. right. Thank you. Um, IT, uh, we're going into uh, decision making. Yes. So a short recess, please. Okay, the Committee on Water and Land is going into decision making on its um, agenda of uh, Wednesday, February 7th. Um, members on SB 3157 uh, relating to direct negotiations for public land uh, leases, uh, Chair is going to recommend that we pass uh, this measure um, and we'd like to uh, add a section uh, with amendments um, with regards to uh, Mr. McCauley's uh, recommendation um, and the language would be, uh, and DLNR, just for your info if this would work, all dispositions shall be by lease only, disposed of by public auction in accordance with the procedure set forth in sections 171.14 and 171.17, or by direct negotiations in 171.59. Would that be uh, an issue or a problem? And I don't think so. Well, you're adding. 59 doesn't currently allow the negotiations. Oh, okay. Okay. An, or okay, so not the fifty nine. Yeah. One seventy one fifty nine. Yeah, right now we don't have anything that allows straight direct negotiation. That was why we have this. Okay. So this wouldn't uh, this would complicate Okay, all right. Okay. Uh we'll just defect the date then to July first, twenty fifty, and continue on the conversation. Thank you. Okay. So members uh SB three one five seven is to pass with the amendments, which would be just defecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Okay, uh, Vice Chair, any discussions? Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3157 with amendments, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Uh, reservations for now. Okay. Senator Favela. No. Madam Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, uh, SB 2151 relating to the revocable permits. Um, Chair would uh, recommend uh, that we keep this measure alive and pass just with the amendments defecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Okay, any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2151 with amendments. Uh, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye with reservation. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Uh, reservations. With reservations. Senator Favela. Reservations. Reservations. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with regards to 2152, uh, and this is relating to BLNR, and Chair's recommendation. Uh, is to pass with the amendments, just defecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Uh, any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendations to pass SB 2152 with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye with reservations. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Uh, WR. With reservations, Senator Favela. WR. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. Thank you. Uh, SB 2153 relating to public lands. Um, Chair's recommendation is um, through the discussions to pass with these amendments. Uh, we're going to remove the amendments in section 2A, uh, subparagraphs 1, 2, and 3, and subparagraph 
B as in boy, but keep the current tax assessed value amendment in section 2B and subparagraph 3. We'll, um, on pages 5 to through 12, re replace every mention of the word department with the board. Uh, and we'll adopt uh, Jim McCauley's amendment on section 2A, subparagraph 1, to replace the word modify with quote, eliminate any of the restrictions specified in sections 171-36A, uh, and will defect the date to July 1st, 2050, and move this to further discussions to the next committee. Any discussions? Okay, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendations to pass SB 2153 with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye with reservations. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Uh, WR. No, reservation. Okay. Senator Favela. WR. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. SB 2035, relating to the Land Use Commission. Uh, and will the Chair's recommendation is to pass with the amendments uh, we'll adopt the LUC's recommended amendments, removing the amendments in section three that would require the LUC to conduct a hearing with 120 days and render a decision within the 180 days of a proper petition filing. And we'll defect the date for continued discussions to July 1st, 2050. Any discussion? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendations to pass SB 2035 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. For SB 2175 relating to the housing, uh, Chair's recommendation is to defer this measure indefinitely. SB 2204 relating to the land use commission and this is uh, the mayor's uh, package uh, chair's recommendation that we pass with these amendments um, this amendment uh, one is to adopt uh, opsd's amendment to clarify that technical archaeological cultural and biological service studies for land recast reclassifications will still be needed. Uh, we'll adopt technical non-substantive amendments and we'll defect the date to July 1st, 2050 for continued discussion. Any discussions, members? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2204 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? No vote. No vote for Senator Favela. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. Uh, SB 2129, and this is relating to historic uh, preservation. The chair's recommendation is to pass uh, with amendments. Uh, we'd like to adopt the Historic Hawaii Foundation's amendments uh, to delete the entire section one, and we'll adopt technical non-substantive amendments, defecting the date as well to July 1st, 2050. Any discussions? Hearing none, vice chair for the vote. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2129 with amendments of the members present. Any no votes or votes with reservation? No vote. No vote for Senator Favela. Madam <clears throat> Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. Uh, SB 2835, uh, Chair's recommendation uh, on this historic property and historic preservation measure. Um, the chair would like to continue this discussion with regards to historic properties uh, and continue discussions in the Judiciary Committee, pass with the amendments, just effecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Okay. 
Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2835 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Favela. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. SB 2300 relating to historic preservation. Uh, this, the Chair's recommendation uh, on this measure, I'd like to adopt uh, the AG's um, amendments, the technical amendments, and we'll adopt the Hawaii Historic Foundation's amendments to improve the applicability uh, for housing projects, uh, continue the defective date to July 1st, 2050. Any discussion? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2300 of the members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. SB 3154, and this is relating to regulation of archaeological activities. Um, Chair's recommendation, uh, let's see. is to pass this measure as well uh, and limit only to the camps that's already on ag lands and defect the date. Oh, I'm sorry. 3154. 3154, sorry. Yeah, relating to regulation, or oh, did I do something? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, 3154 relating to archaeological activities. Uh, chair's recommendation is to uh, just uh, defect the date to July 1st, 2050. Any discussion? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair goes aye. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3154 with amendments of the members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. Thank you. SB 2756 uh, relating to camps uh, and my recommendation uh, is to pass this with the amendments uh, that this measure shall only apply to the camps that are already operating in ag districts. We'll adopt technical and non-substantive amendments. We'll defect the date to July 1st, 2050. Any discussions? Senator yeah. Alafanti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate the discussion on this um, from both sides. However, in listening to the testimony and seeing the Supreme Court's decision, I believe that the best approach would be going through a uh, district boundary amendment and noting that the general plan lists the current uh, parcel on Maui as ag. I believe that would be the best approach rather than through this bill. So for those reasons, uh, Madam Chair, I'm, I'll be voting no. Okay. Um, uh, Madam Chair, same for the very same reasons, I'll be going join the vice chair and declining the vote in favor. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Chair's recommendation then is to pass with the amendments so noted earlier uh, as well, and we'll be defecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Uh, any further discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2756 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes? No, no votes from Senator McKelvey, mm -hmm. your Vice Chair and Senator Favela. Any other no votes or votes with reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Chang. Madam Chair, your recommendation is not adopted. Thank you. Um, SB 2176, and this is relating to tort liability. Uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass with the amendments. We'll be adopting the AG's recommended amendments, except for the amendment regarding assumption of risk, and we'll defect the date to July 1st, 2050. Any further discussions? Hearing none, oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Senator um, Elefante. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the discussion on this, but noting the uh, response from the Attorney General uh, regarding the assumption of risks, and while that's still in the bill, that's mostly the premise of the bill. Unfortunately, for those reasons, I have serious concerns, and 
uh, will not be able to support. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I too will be uh, also declining to vote for it. But I'll, another thing too is to require by statute to award attorneys fees and costs. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll proceed then with the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments on SB 2176. Chair goes aye. Okay. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2176 with amendments. Of the members present, noting the no votes from Senator McKelvey and your vice chair. Any other no votes? No vote. No vote for Senator Favela. Any other votes with no's or reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Chang. Madam Chair, your recommendation is not adopted. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, members. This concludes um, the Water Land Committee uh, hearing. Uh, as well, just a reminder, members, at 3 o'clock, we have a joint hearing with the Committee on Public Safety in room 224 at 3 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks.